Okay, so this is lab uh, exercise 3.2. And I'm starting out with this picture of lab 3.1. And what we're gonna be doing is modifying that circuit so that the op amp is able to turn on and off both a motor and an LED instead of just an LED. Now, just briefly to recall uh, the previous circuit, we had um, two inputs to our op amp comparator. There's no feedback in the op amp. So the op amp output will either be high or low, high being close to the positive rail and low being close to the ground rail. I say close because uh, you know, the idea, the output of, of an op amp as a comparator, we think about it as a binary uh, on or off, high or low. Uh, we actually measured it and found it was 4.8 volts when high, even though our rail was six volts. And that's because there's some voltage drop inside the op amp. But the important point here is that as a comparator, the output is high or low. And you wanna make it obvious that it's high versus low. And so 4.8 is clearly high and zero volts is clearly low. Okay, recall that circuit. When we shine bright light on the CDS cell, VL went high, it went above three volts. We had a reference value of three volts. And uh, so when VL exceeded three volts, the op amp went high and the um, uh, LED would glow. If you were to go and hook up a motor to this output like, at the, between this node and ground, if you hooked up a motor, you'd find that that motor simply will not turn on. In fact, you'd also find that this output voltage drops way down close to zero volts. That's because a motor, when you turn it on, requires several hundred milliamps. It requires a certain turn on current just to overcome the static inertia of the motor. And then even once it gets going, it requires a couple hundred milliamps. This op amp can only provide 20 milliamps. That's what the manufacturer's data sheet says. So this is designed to provide an output that's high or low. It can drive an LED, something that doesn't require a lot of current. But to drive something like a motor that requires a fair amount of current, we have to modify the output stage of the circuit. So what we're going to do is keep everything to the left of my hand the same. So we have our, our uh, light detector circuit, and the output is high or low. But then what we're going to do is implement a low side switch a transistor circuit to turn the motor in the LED on and off. So let's take a look at uh, what we have in the top right of this figure. So you have a motor and the motor, one terminal of the motor is connected to six volts. See, this is our voltage rail here, right? Six volts. So we have one terminal of the motor connected directly to the plus terminal of our six volt battery pack. And then we have the other terminal. If you ground that, that motor will run. In parallel with the motor, we have a resistor and an LED. One terminal uh, of that resistor is connected to six volts. And then we have the anode, which is the long wire of the LED, and then the cathode. So we have, we have these two uh, indicator circuits. When I say indicator, they tell you something's happening. We have a motor uh, and it's, it, as an indicator, it'll turn on or off. And then we have the LED that'll glow or not. These two circuits are in parallel. They, they have one of their respective ends connected high. The other end is brought to this node here. If you ground this node, they will surely turn on. Just by grounding that node, we will have dropped six volts across the motor, six volts across this circuit. You ground that node, the LED glows, and the motor turns on. So here we've implemented a low side switch using a TIP31 NPN power transistor. Now you experimented with one of these earlier uh, in the previous lab. The idea here now is that the the op amp provides a high or low output, but it doesn't provide a lot of current. We just need enough current to turn on the transistor. So we'll, when we turn on that transistor, what that's doing is it's providing a path connection between the collector and the emitter. And we discussed previously how it's not quite a short circuit between the collector and the emitter. There's a small voltage drop there. It's only a, only a couple tenths of a volt, which means that the rest of our six volts is gonna be applied across the motor and this resistor LED circuit. So again, uh, we have bright light shining on the CDS cell. VL, that's V light, exceeds V ref. The output of the op amp goes high. That's turning on this transistor. That means you've got a connection between the collector and the emitter. And then this functions as a low side switch. It's essentially connecting this node to ground. And then the motor will run and the LED will glow. Um, before we hook it up,
just bear in mind the pinout for the transistor. When I take the transistor and I lay it down on the table so that the heat sink is, is touching the board, uh, and I look at it from the top, the pins are base, collector, and the emitter. Different transistors have different pinouts. You always want to make sure that you look up you know, you can just you can just Google it or pull up the data sheet, tip 31, and it'll tell you which is which lead is the base, which is the collector, which is the emitter. So what I'm going to do is take our original circuit, and I'm just going to add these to the output. From the output of the op amp, which is pin one, we're going to have a 200 ohm resistor. Our kits don't have 200 ohms; they have 100 ohms, so we're going to use 200 ohms in series. Then we'll go into the base. I'll ground the emitter, and then I'll have. These components here, the high side will be connected directly to six volts, and then the low side will be collected, connected to our collector. Okay, so let's go ahead and build it. So this wire here is the output of our op amp, and I'm going to connect that to 200 ohms. So there's 100 ohms. And then in series, I have the other 100 ohms. And that's, that's in column eight. And that's where the base of the transistor has to go. And that was the first lead of the transistor. So force the transistor in there. Now I have to ground the emitter of the transistor. And that's the rightmost lead. Okay, now the indicator circuits, that's the LED in the motor. Remember, they start out going high. So I have, I have a resistor. This is a 1K resistor that goes to our six volts. And then I had the anode of my LED. That's the long lead, the one that always goes to positive. That goes to the other side of that resistor. And then the, other, the cathode goes to the collector. And you want to be careful that you don't inadvertently let the the leads of these components touch each other because that would create a that would create a short circuit. Um, but what I've got here is uh, this resistor goes into the base of the transistor, and then I have the cathode of the LED into the collector, and then the emitter is going to ground. Okay, now I have to hook up the motor. And as always, we have to use these little clip leads on the motor and the clip leads are kind of rigid to work with, but that's okay, we'll make do. Uh, okay, I'm going to connect the motor directly to six volts. And then the other uh, end of the motor has to go to my collector. I'll bring that around to the front. Okay, so now if everything is hooked up correctly, when I bring the battery into the circuit, when I first hook, hook it up, nothing should turn on because I just have ambient light shining on the CDS cell. But then when I shine bright light on the cell, I should cause the motor and the LED to turn on. And indeed. And you can see that the motor jumps as soon as you turn it on. That's really, that's, you know, that's sort of indicative of the amount of current that that thing is. I mean, you can tell when you pick that up and turn it around, right? There's a lot, you can tell that there's some torque in there. There's some mechanical torque in that thing. And you don't get that torque without drawing, you know, a, a fair amount of current. Okay, so much for that lab.